Okay, so now uh, we are going to look at a couple of more things related to extraction. One is how do I choose a solvent? Can I have some kind of a guideline which we can uh, use for quickly selecting a solvent? Uh, and second is what kind of equipment uh, do I want to use? So we are going to look at these two things now. So first of all, if we start with the solvent um, selection, uh, you can think of solvents uh, having different kinds of structure or structural uh, or different kinds of organic compounds with different functionality. So one of the possibility is uh, uh, that solvents are saturated hydrocarbons. So saturated hydrocarbons meaning uh, say let me just leave the color. So saturated let me take some black color now it's easily visible. Yeah so saturated hydrocarbon would mean like heptane, octane right? or you could be having aromatic hydrocarbons like benzene but benzene we don't use carcinogenic so xylene or toluene so they have aromatic uh, structure more polar and they can interact more strongly with the with the solvent uh, with the compounds that we want to extract or you could have halogenated hydrocarbons meaning like chloroform CHCl3 or methylene dichloride CH2Cl2 or sometimes so MDC methylene dichloride or sometimes it is also called as dichloromethane. So chlorinated compounds so they have um, they are more polar so they can interact with the solutes using hydrogen bonding or it could be even ethylene dichloride so you could have C uh, ethylene and uh, you could have one Cl here and one Cl here. So ethylene dichloride. So these are the kind of halogenated dye, no, no pride. Okay. Or you could have ethers and ketone. You could have a diethyl ether, for example, or a ketone. You could be having an MIBK methyl isobutyl ketone or methyl ethyl ketone or diethyl ketone. Right. So ketone compounds, so you have C double bond O C. So this C O now bond is more polar. So it can this O will have lone pair, and those lone pair in the oxygen can interact with the with the solutes. Or you could have alcohols and esters, you could have ethyl acetate, ethyl acetate as a solvent, or alcohol, you could have an isopropyl alcohol as a as a solvent. Of course, isopropyl alcohol has a more solubility in water. Uh, but you could use butanol, pentanol and the one example that we saw of alcohols was the octanol which is having even lesser solubility in water. It, it still has some finite solubility but, uh, uh, but lesser as compared to let's say isopropyl alcohol. Um, um, so, uh, so you could have, uh, you could have uh, alcohols as solvent or esters, you could have ethyl acetate as a solvent. So one of the ways in which you can select a solvent is remember this activity, it, it is all governed, this distribution coefficient is governed by this, uh, uh, by these activity coefficients, by these activity coefficients, how the solvent interacts with the solute, how the water interacts with the solute and how the solvent interacts with the solute. So based on that interaction, there are some general guidelines that can be uh, that can be thought about. So these are the different groups in which solvents are uh, are taken. So this is from a source, image progress, 1980. You can look it up. So these could be the solute class, and these could be the solvent class. So these same one to ten are those either solute or same 1 to 10 are solvents. Remember now, so we want the activity coefficient to be lowered. If you lower the activity coefficient, then you would have uh, that particular solute remaining in the in that particular phase. We saw that when we talked about distillation as well. So this negative sign indicates lowering of the activity coefficient, which means negative deviation from ideality. And positive sign means positive deviation from ideality. We don't want that. Otherwise, it will be thrown out from the solvent into the uh, into the aqueous phase. Your distribution coefficient will be poor. So, if your solute is phenol, 
you would want to take solvent from group 3 or groups 6 to 12. So you could, if you want to extract phenol from aqueous phase or phenolic compounds from the aqueous phase, you could take a solvent from class 3. Class 3 would be alcohols like octanol if you want or class 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You could take tertiary amine, secondary amine, primary amine, ethers, esters, aromatic compounds as solvents. Right? Why amine? Because then amine would have, let us say, N tertiary amine, R1, R2, R3 and phenol would have an OH group. This H can undergo or can participate along with this uh, uh, hydrogen bonding, this OH can take, can it, it has acidic nature, the, the H is acidic in nature. So it can react with this N, form a quaternary ammonium compound and therefore it would lower the activity coefficient of phenol in an amine kind of solvent and therefore it would be preferentially get extracted into the organic phase, right. So for example, so if you want to use another example, let us take the exactly reverse case would be if you want to extract a tertiary amine kind of compound from an aqueous phase, you could use phenol as a solvent in the organic phase, right. Or you could use this class 2 acids or thiol, thiol is SH. This SH that weak bond H can protonate or can uh, react with the amine and form a quaternary ammonium compound. So you can use uh, these kinds of uh, 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 this kind of chart to do a uh, selection. For example, another example. Let's take if I want to take, uh, let's say I want to extract a ketone or an amide from <coughs> from an aqueous phase. I could use either phenolic compounds or alcohols or I could use poor active uh, H or multihaloparaffic meaning methylene chloride, MDC, methylene dichloride. But I would not want to use these kinds of compounds. I would not want to use another amine. I would not want to use primary amine. I would not want to use ether. I would not want to use ester. They all increase the uh, positive, uh, they, they all increase gamma cause a positive deviation from ideality. So that is how you would use uh, uh, this table for doing a primary uh, selection of, of the solvent. Now in terms of how you would measure the distribution coefficient, you would measure the distribution coefficient exactly like this, exactly what we have talked about in the very first, uh, first slide of the lecture. You would create a dispersion, you would generally, you would settle. And then you will take a sample from the organic phase, you will take a sample from the aqueous phase. So what you would do is you would take it in a separating funnel, you would add the organic phase, you would shake the separating funnel to attain equilibrium, then you will settle, then you will have an organic phase here and you will have an aqueous phase here. You will take a sample from the aqueous phase, you will take a sample from the organic phase and you will analyze the concentration of that particular solute P, whatever you want to extract you will analyze and then you will repeat this for different phase ratio or different initial concentration and generate this whole curve. Every point, one experiment that you do will generate one point on this curve. So either you will take different phase ratios and generate more points or you can take different initial starting concentration in the aqueous phase and then you can generate more points and then you can plot that to get you the equilibrium uh, data. Okay. Next thing we are going to look at is extraction equipment. Okay. So again, what I'm, what we are going to do is only look at the qualitative uh, description and the quantitative part we are going to do in the, uh, in the subsequent um, uh, subsequent uh, subsequent class because that will require estimation of mass transfer coefficient and so on uh, like we have seen in the previous example. Um, so uh, 
let's first look at the qualitative description so to qualitatively what are we doing we are creating a dispersion of one phase into the other phase in this particular case the red is the organic phase we are creating a dispersion of organic phase into the aqueous phase now breaking an organic phase into dispersion requires energy so energy we have seen when we talked about multi-phase reactors that you can supply energy in the form of mechanical energy so you could have an agitator mixer settler or a rotating disc contactor all these pictures we will see we will see how they operate or dense or we could use the density difference itself or a pressure difference between the phases and we remember when we had talked about gas liquid uh, this was like a bubble column but when we have now liquid liquid we are going to call it as a not bubble column because the word bubble we are not going to use bubble word we use only when we have a gas and a liquid now we have two liquids so we are going to call it as a droplet so we are going to have a droplets being generated into another continuous phase so we can call that as either spray columns or packed columns or sieve plate columns or we could use the centrifugal force to generate the dispersion and to separate the dispersion so we could call them as annular centrifugal extractors and then we have one more uh, one more possibility uh, something called as pulsed column so they fall in between this mechanical energy and um, and and this density difference and generating uh, generating sprays so what we will do now is to look at and uh, look at the different words that are shown we are going to look at the equipment corresponding to each of these words so first of all mixer settler so how is a mixer settler going to look at mixer is for creating the dispersion so we have an agitator so agitator we have a motor that is going to give you power to rotate that agitator so agitator could be disc turbine could be rusted turbine could be propeller could be hydrofoil whatever different equipment now rather than calling it as an aqueous phase and an organic phase i'm going to i'm going to just call it as a light phase and a heavy phase so light phase typically would mean organic phase and heavy phase would typically mean aqueous phase but some organic solvents like methylene dichloride chloroform they are heavier than the aqueous phase they have density more than 1000 kg per meter cube but most of the solvents are going to have density less so i'm going to call it as a light phase and a heavy phase <coughs> so they enter dispersion is created here this dispersion overflows into the settler the light phase goes to the top of the column a top of the settler and the heavy phase goes to the bottom of the settler by gravity so it's a gravity settler and then the heavy phase is taken out here and the light phase overflows from this top part of the of the settler and the light phase is coming out so the light phase going out and the heavy phase going out they are in equilibrium equilibrium is reached between this blue phase and the yellow phase and the mixing dispersion mass transfer is all done in the mixer part of it is that okay now obviously this is going to give you one theoretical stage okay and if i want to remember the problem that we have done one theoretical stage means we require so much solvent isn't it whereas if i want to reduce the solvent quantity i would should be doing either cross current and even better i should be doing counter current extraction so now we could arrange these mixer settlers to give you counter current flow so think about this as mixer one and settler one so m1 and s1 are you able to visualize this is like an isometric drawing this is your m2 2 and settler 2 mixer 3 and settler 3 so you would have the light phase coming in here 
to mixer 1. It will get mixed in this mixer. There is an agitator here. Dispersion would be created here, mixer. It would flow into the settler from this window. It would get separated here, this window that we have shown. It would get separated here. Heavy phase would go out from here. Light phase would go to the second mixer. Now mixer, this is going to do the mixing job. It is going to go into the settler 2. The light phase is going to go to mixer 3. The heavy phase is going to come from bottom into the mixer 1. Mixer 3 again is going to agitate. It is going to go through this window into settler 3. Light phase is going to go out. The heavy phase is going to enter into mixer 3. So the heavy phase is going from mixer 3 to this settler. It is going to enter into mixer 2. Go to settler. Go to mixer 1. Go to settler 1 and out. So if you think about the heavy phase profile. It enters into M3. Then it goes into S3, then it goes into mixer 2, then it goes into settler 2, then it goes into mixer 1, then it goes into settler 1 and then it goes out. If you look at the light phase, it enters mixer 1, then it goes to settler 1, then it goes to mixer 2, then it goes to settler 2, then it goes to mixer 3, then it goes to settler 3 and then it goes out. Do you see that it is Heavy phase is going to go from M3, mixer 3 to mixer 2 to mixer 1, whereas the light phase is going to go from mixer 1 to mixer 2 to mixer 3. So they are going to go in a counter current manner. Right. Okay, we could do it, arrange them horizontally on the floor or we could even arrange them one on top of the other. So either horizontally arranged. Or they could be arranged vertically one on top of the other. One on top of the other. Just try to visualize. And that's how we would get multiple theoretical stages and you will, that's how you will get multiple counter current extraction. Another way would be to use a rotating disc contactor. Now only uh, problem here is that, oh, oh, I should not say problem right now, uh, only uh, issue here is that mixing and settling is done one after the other. So I do mixing, I do settling, I do mixing, I do settling, I do mixing, I do settling. Do you realize? Whereas if you think about a rotating disc contactor, what you will have is a light phase which will come in. You will have droplets being formed here. These droplets will move up. They will get separated here. And then the light phase will go out. Heavy phase, let's say, is a continuous phase. It will go downwards in the column. And the agitators, these discs that are there, they are powered by a motor. And this disc would be rotating about around because of this shaft. This is the shaft. So I could have a heavy phase continuous. and light phase dispersed or I could have a light phase continuous and I could have droplets of the heavy phase being sprayed from the drop. These droplets would come down, they would accumulate so and then the heavy phase would go out from here. Okay. So either we would have light phase dispersed or we would have light phase continuous. So you see this is a continuous contact, continuously, continuous in the sense across this whole column, across this whole column, the droplets are having, are in a continuous contact with the rising light phase. Either the heavy phase is droplet wise and the light phase is continuous or the light phase is droplet wise and heavy phase is continuous. So there is a continuous contact, continuous meaning continuous across the whole equipment. Whereas here 
this is a discrete contact i have contact here then separation i have contact here then separation i have contact here then separation <coughs> the contact is not continuously taking place throughout the whole throughout the whole of the equipment whereas rotating this contactor it is a continuous contact between the heavy phase and the dispersed phase the droplets are moving the continuous phase is going down or up depending on whichever way your droplets are moving but they are moving opposite to each other and the interface is here the separation phase separation is here and agitation is there by means of these discs to create dispersion to break the droplets the droplets will coalesce they get broken up they coalesce they get broken up and so on okay. or we could have a spray column we don't have the agitation so we talked about mode of energy either mixer settler or rotating disc contactor right or you could have a different kinds of discs you need not have discs you could have impellers call it as a york shibel column followed by some kind of coalescing region provided a pack provide some packing between the two uh, between the two mixers agitators or now you can think about as a pressure difference or a density difference creating a dispersion second category spray column packed column suplet column so spray column i would have a spray of let's say heavy phase in this particular case or light phase the droplet is created droplets are created not by agitation but by the distributor sparger or distributor so this light phase suppose light phase is the dispersed now these dispersed droplets are going up they will coalesce here and the light phase will go out here and the heavy phase will come in heavy phase will be the continuous phase it is going down so heavy phase goes downwards light phase goes upwards in the form of droplets so again it's a continuous contact spray column or i could have a packing provided between this in this column to make the droplets flow, flow more in a plug flow manner so here the droplets flow down we talked about spray columns when we were talking about cre uh, last semester you would have certain amount of back mixing in the continuous phase heavy phase in this particular case <clears throat> so that back mixing could be prevented by having packings so you could have you, you could call it as a packed column just like in a gas liquid absorption we use a packed column or you could have a cu tray column so think about these cus so this is like a plate the light phase is coming in droplets of the light phase are created they go up they accumulate here and then the light phase goes out the heavy phase continuous phase comes in so now the heavy phase if i want to show it in blue color the heavy phase will come in come into this column here it will go across the tray it will go through the down comer then it will go across the tray then through the down comer then across the tray through the down comer across the tray through the down comer just like we have the the liquid phase moving in a gas liquid tray column down comer across the tray and then down comer and across the tray and down comer and then finally out whereas the dispersed phase if i want to show in red color will will get formed droplets these droplets will come here they will coalesce here fresh droplets will be created by the cu cu plate another bubble another set of droplets will be created by the next cu they will coalesce again below the cu they will new droplets will be created they will coalesce again new droplets will be created they will coalesce again new droplets will be created 
the OLS again new droplets will be created just like we have a gas liquid absorption column or a gas liquid distillation column remember what we are doing liquid we are allowing it to come from top liquid accumulates on the tray liquid goes through the down comer to the next tray this is a sieve plate this is a sieve plate bubbles are generated these bubbles coalesce here new bubbles are generated here so bubbles are created OLS, the aqueous phase or the or the liquid phase goes down to the next tray to through the down comer. It is exactly same as a gas liquid uh, tray column, and same way here. This exactly same uh, operation coalescence redispersion coalescence of the light phase redispersion. So it coalesces below the tray, redispersed because of the sieves. Coalesced, redispersed. Coalesced, redispersed and so on. Another variation is to have sieve plates but provide extra energy by means of pulsing. So I could have a pressure pulse applied. So if you think about pressure, I could apply pressure pulse to this liquid phase. So these droplets will in the forward whenever I have higher pressure, these droplets will be forced in the forward direction when I have a pressure reduction these droplets will be retained back. So I have a pulsating motion of the droplets in the column as they rise upwards as they rise upwards because of extra pulsing action. So this extra pulsing action generates more dispersion because extra energy is uh, supplied and therefore <coughs> I could have even better mass transfer as compared to if I don't do the pulsing. Okay. Or you could have an annular centrifugal extractor. So you have a light phase coming in, aqueous heavy phase coming in. They go here in this part, in this region, dispersion is created. Visualize, visualize this as an outer cylinder. This is your outer cylinder. And this is your inner cylinder. So two cylinders with a small gap between them. That's the annular section. And these cylinders are rotating. The inner cylinder is rotating and the outer cylinder is stationary. Outer cylinder is stationary. And the inner cylinder is rotating. This inner cylinder is rotating. And that creates a very strong centrifugal field here and that creates a dispersion in the annular gap between the mix between the inner cylinder and outer cylinder and then this dispersion comes to the inside part now inside part it is separated by the same centrifugal action which is creating this dispersion this rotor is rotating so the heavy phase moves towards the outside light phase moves towards the inside which can be taken out and the heavy phase can be taken out outside right so try to visualize how this annular centrifugal extractor is 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 working couple of things i want you to do now a uh, couple of things i want you to do now uh, one uh, one thing that we oh, just one second yeah so uh, what I want you to do now is to think about how we are generating a dispersion. Right? So what do we want? We want to generate a dispersion. Means what? We want to create interfacial area. We want to have good mass transfer coefficient. And second, we want to have counter current flow. And third, we want to have plug flow of both aqueous phase as well as organic phase. These are the three requirements. Remember what we talked about. We wanted counter current operation. We want multiple stages. Right? We want good mass transfer. We talked about this problem. 
we want mass transfer isn't it mass transfer is going to dictate to us what is our height of transfer unit higher the value of mass transfer coefficient lower is going to be the height of transfer unit recall gas absorption days lower is going to be the size of the column required number of transfer units i want more number of transfer units or more number of theoretical stages to be accommodated so that i can do multiple counter current extraction so the requirement for doing liquid liquid extraction is one to generate dispersion second to generate counter current flow and not just counter current flow multiple number of transfer units or multiple theoretical stages three four five six as many as i want i can reduce the solvent requirement and the third thing is i want plug flow only when i have plug flow i can write a balance like this this balance we can write only if i have plug flow of both the phases aqueous phase downwards and organic phase upwards if i don't have plug flow if i have axial mixing the concentration differences will be reduced peclet number remember we talked about that when we were talking about rtd dispersed plug flow model dispersion is going to create back mixing back mixing is going to reduce the driving force i am going to require more height of the column so requirement in terms of doing good liquid liquid extraction is to generate plug flow for both the phases i want you to think about these things think about the requirements of let's say absorption we want counter current flow of gas and liquid we want multiple number of stages we want good packing area so that the height required is small same way for liquid liquid extraction we want good mass transfer coefficient we want more number of theoretical stages we want counter current flow we want plug flow what i want you to do is to now think about think about the equipment that we saw mixer settler rotating disc spray column packed column sieve plate column annular centrifugal extractor on the basis of these three criteria and make some kind of a decision tree or a, make some kind of a selection of which one would be better than the other on the basis of these three criteria these are not the only three criteria but these are the main three criteria basis of these three criteria i want you to think about these different equipment okay i'm just showing you some some table which will be useful for selecting so what are the uh, just to recap what are we talking about we have we want to see whether i want to do a batch extraction or a continuous extraction then i would want to think about which phase would be dispersed whether the organic is to be dispersed in aqueous or whether the aqueous is to be dispersed in organic how many theoretical stages are required counter current operation i should not be asking do we require no we must do counter current operation if there is a back mixing i want to quantify axial mixing back mixing right physical chemical properties what is the density difference between the aqueous phase organic phase what is the interfacial tension that's how the droplet is going to be uh, created right so many considerations are there so on these i have only shown you three major considerations right now that's the most important just now but there are other considerations as well i want you to think about the different equipment that you have we have talked about right from mixer settler rotating disc contactor spray column packed column tray column pulsed extraction column annular centrifugal extractor i want you to think about all these three in terms of these criteria 
first of all what i want you to do is see the youtube videos of these different equipment unless you see them operating under operation you will not be able to visualize so see for yourself youtube videos of all of these equipment okay that's homework second homework is once you do this think about the criteria either on this slide or criteria here and see which equipment is good for what criteria then come out with some kind of a selection criteria i'm just going to show you some table okay don't trust that table understand this table for yourself so first of all if you think about mixer settler i can operate the mixer settler as batch wise or continuous if you think about number of theoretical stages one mixer settler one mixer settler will give you one theoretical stage so if i want four theoretical stages i will require four mixers and four settlers but i can arrange them in a counter current manner each mixer unit i can assume to be one theoretical stage because there is agitation i would have high turbulence and i would have high mass transfer rate because i have number of stages requirement let's say i have four mixers and four settlers i will have to arrange them i will have to arrange them like this i will have to arrange them like this it will require a huge floor space if i have solids coming in along with one of the phases agitator is there so it can handle the solids okay inventory of the phases capital and operating cost very high agitator space right does it work with low density and low surface tension this is something that we will discuss in the next class how do i um, why do i why, why am i saying no here okay. that's something we'll discuss in the next class but think about a sieve plate column i will use it for a continuous operation can i have theoretical stages high number of theoretical stages yes i can have one theoretical stage second theoretical stage third fourth fifth sixth and so on provided each one is behaving like a theoretical stage else i can calculate like i calculate for gas liquid distillation i can calculate murphy efficiency of a Three, same way I can calculate Murphy efficiency of a sieve plate, one sieve plate, and then I can have um, two, three theoretical, two, three sieves being equal to one theoretical stage. But I can arrange one top of the other, and I can have as many such sieve trays as possible, and I can get high number of theoretical stages. Do I have axial back mixing? No, I have very low axial back mixing because I have trays to segregate the flows of the phases one phase is going down and the other phase is going coalescing dispersing coalescing dispersing that's how the actual mixing is avoided mass transfer rate is good because i can generate good amount of dispersion but it's not as high because the level of turbulence is not as high as mixer because i am providing energy only because of density difference not additional energy by mechanical agitation so i am not putting it as very high or high i am just putting it as medium floor space required is very low because i can have these trays one on top of the other like a packed distillation column or a sieve plate distillation column right? can it handle solids no because the solids will go and choke these sieves right think about each of these equipment with each of these criteria 
and see for yourself that you agree with each of these terms. That's your homework. That's your homework. Okay. And if you have difficulty, we can always discuss in the next class. Okay. Is that, uh, is the homework clear to everybody? Is the homework clear to everybody? So, what we will do is, we will stop for now. Okay. We have only done a qualitative discussion on the different types of equipment. Next class, we will start doing quantitative, uh, quantitative calculations. We will calculate mass transfer, we will calculate interfacial area, we will calculate the size required, all those things we will calculate. Right? For that, we are going to need, of course, the physical properties. Uh, we will see all that in the next class, but at least qualitatively, you should be clear about what equipment is for what purpose.